Back when I was part of a big coalition, at the time it was Catch-22, I used to fly the Gila as my no-sack boat, and very soon after the Gila I got the Macariel, which is still alive to this day. Now, the Gila is one very interesting little cruiser. It can use both missiles and drones, after all it has a bonus on both of them, and of course it is also a very, very tanky ship. So it will be interesting to see how the Gila holds up nowadays. And let's quickly take a look at the basic info at the trade description. Now the trade description of the ship has remained the same over time. I remember in the beta days the robots was plus 400%, but that got changed right about the, right around the release to 200%, and the rest of the stats do look okay. I remember when I got the ship for the first time, my skills were not the best, but still I managed to do really well with the Gila. Two drones, four high slots, three medium, five low, three combat and three engineering rigs. The Gila is a shield tank, so don't even think about doing a armor tank Gila, it's really, really cursed. The Gila has a pretty decent capacitor, and overall the recharge rate and time is also very nice. The signature radius is average, the scan resolution is ok, the center strength is also ok. The Gila is not the fastest, but it's faster than the Stratios, so it's not the slowest faction cruiser. Now let's go on to the build. 874.42 DPS, which is not bad since I'm using rapid missiles and I also use drones. This is more of a PvP build that focuses on endurance overall. I'm very happy with the with the DPS output and if you have implants then that's going to be even better. Now I have assault drones, although I actually prefer the offense drones for extra DPS, but the assault drones are good if you have to chase a small target. One afterburner, dual large modules, one large capacitor battery, one large booster and dual adaptives. And as for the rigs, I have dual drone speed augmenters and there is one integration for tank, a combination between DPS and tank. After all, I didn't really feel uh, like going full DPS on this Gila, after all, they have a nice shield, so might might as well take advantage of the shield. And the engineering rigs are also focused on capacitor and power grid. So, uh, let me quickly show the nano core. This is the Trailblazer nano core. Yeah, it is. This nano core is easily obtainable from the Concord Pass. So, uh, if you want to go get the core, you can do that very easily and it gives me plus 18% extra drone damage. Now for the implants you have several choices. Now my personal choice would be to go with the drone bombs, after all the drone bombs are very good and for PvP they will be, they will be doing a lot of damage. So if you have the drone bomb implant then you can use that on the Gila without a problem and later on in the video I will also show you how the warhead charge works although the warhead charge is a missile implant so the Gila might be in a weird position because it can use both implants just fine and of course uh, there is going to be more missile implants that you can theoretically use but some of them are currently being changed so I'll be waiting for the change to be finished and then I will show you how that works as well. As for the general units, well, it's fairly simple. Shield booster, capacitor battery, or afterburner, depends on what trait you want to increase on your ship. Now let me quickly show you several different uh, builds that I imagined for this ship. You can use a Nosferatu and a damage control for close range. You get extra tank and the 13 seconds damage control activation time is also very nice. 
you can do something like this with triple adaptives and what large booster or you can replace the adaptive into a reactive which also helps against laser boats, railguns and drones. We can also use torpedo launchers for highest possible paper DPS but keep in mind the torpedo launchers are not going to do much damage to smaller targets and if you like long range combat the Gila can do that just fine with the medium missile launchers they have a good range 985.65 DPS and of course you can use this build with a micro warp drift for the extra kitek speed which again does seem to be working just fine okay so let me show you the active stats 79,000 hit points 75 682 69 and 83 percent resistance 870 meter per second is the afterburner speed overall i'm quite happy with the current results and unfortunately uh, the drone bombs still don't show the actual dps the dps is currently about 3000 with the drone bombs which honestly is pretty good and uh, it will definitely have a major impact on the target well then let's take a let's take a ride with the gila and let's see how this little boat works now in high sec you can do missions just fine with this ship i would actually recommend that you go full on drone drone dps in high sec after all in high sec you will not have the problem of encountering pirates and in high sec you don't really need a heavy tank so the gila can tactically push about 4.5 5000 dps if built for dps only which is a really good dps value should be clearing high sec missions just fine and i like to do i like to do this test because it shows that you don't have to fly a battleship in order to complete high sec missions you can farm very easily with a faction cruiser and of course you can get some decent clear times with this ship as well so the first the first run here will be done with the uh, drone bombs now i have the remote reload on the implant and the remote reload is good for missions but for pvp i would recommend that you go with the other attribute because the other attribute does not have the damage reduction you get the 300 percent extra damage which in all honesty is really nasty it does a lot of damage on a dps ship it can it can catch ships off guard and it can also be used for for defense ag against pirates because not many pirates expect to to encounter drum bombs and from my personal experience i i have to say that the drum bombs are currently much better than the barrage implant for pvp imagine this Imagine a Stratius with drum bombs that's built for full DPS just decloaking right next to you and basically killing your ship without you in blinking. That's basically how good the drum bombs at the moment are and that's why the drum bombs are excellent. E excellent PvP implants. Now if you have the Nosferatu installed, I just realized this while uh, while recording, don't really set a 0 km orbit. I believe the falloff for the medium Nosferatu is about 5 km, so I recommend that you orbit at the, at the falloff or at the optimal range, which would be about 10 km. So the torpedo launchers should have the range to hit the target, although at that distance you can also use the rapid missile launchers without a problem. It also works really well.
in my case, back when I used back when I used to fight the Gila, I didn't really. Um, I actually forgot what kind of build I had. I think I also focused on full tank back then. Although at the time things were things were a little bit more, I guess, different. There were no implants. There was. Actually, when I rem if I remember correctly, I did not even use C-type modules at the time. C-types were really expensive. And I have to also mention this. The catch days, at least in my, in my career in this game, were some of the best ones that I have experienced. I had a lot of fun back then. The game was a bit different as well. And the whole coalition was also really good. Very sad that they have uh, that they have collapsed in the end, but I still have the sweet memories, and that is all that matters in the end. And of course, I have that Macarial that is still alive. That Macarial basically uh, went around the galaxy a couple times. It went from Syndicate to Catch, and then from Catch to to Galante Space, then it was at Amar Space, then back at Syndicate, and then back at the... back at Galante Space, I mean back at... at the current location, which is the border system between Caldery and Galante. So that ship has a very rich history behind it, and to think that my Makari was a PvE boat is kind of hilarious now because because nowadays the the Macarial is anything but anything but a PvE boat. No, it might be. My apologies for the for delays here because I'm doing something in the background. Okay, let me just quickly jump clone somewhere. Honestly the current DPS on the Gila is is okay, it's, it's acceptable, that's for sure. No issues and no complaints from me so far. We are under attack. We are being warp scrambled. Also very curious to know how it will perform. Against attack. how it will perform with the with the missile implants, and we will find that out very soon. Multitasking can be a little bit difficult sometimes, especially when I have to do a lot of things at once. But so far, the shield is also holding out really well. The one thing that you can easily do with a PvP Gila, you can easily go and fit for a full DPS. You can go full DPS or you can go full tank. It depends on player pre preference. In uh, in the end, of course, in my case, I prefer I prefer tanky ships. I still do prefer tanky ships. Although recently, I also start to fly DPS only ships. For example, the Macario, 
Megatron Striker. And there are some cruisers that also fly that are basically full DPS, but you know, they have some uh, good defenses. I had a good fight with the Cinnabal today. I uh, had to fight one Drake that was really heavily tanked, and somehow I, I managed to break the tank in the end, but I was left in about 20-38% uh, armor. So that fight was a little bit risky. Okay, so this mission has been finished, and honestly I'm so far quite satisfied with the outcome. Now let's swap the implant to the warhead charge and then we can see how the Gila will perform. Okay, now the general units will work roughly the same. Basically go for shield, for capacitor, for speed. In my case it is capacitor and then shield performance. Of course the extra shield boost will impact the, the capacitor, so the extra buff on extra buff on the on the capacitor battery is is going to be very helpful all right sorry for the weird cut surprise phone call so uh, the Gila so far is performing really well. I have the I have the thermal and explosive missiles installed, but you should be using thermal or kinetic. Of course, we can mix in the other two as well because the ship has a bonus on bonus extra damage on thermal. So uh, I will be using the thermal missiles on basically most ships here. And thermal does. Uh, basically do most average damage to most ships so uh, a very decent damage choice now what will clear missions faster the the drone bombs or the warhead charge well that's a tough question uh, i would say the drone bombs seem to be a little bit faster because after all the gila has more damage on the drones than it has on on missiles and I like to focus on one weapon system if I were to focus on both well that might be it might not work well so uh, focusing on one weapon type is uh, the way to go and by the way the rattlesnake that I was talking about has been killed for some reason they decided to warp back to the to the gate and 4.2 billion kill so that was a good good target for the for the revelation and I haven't I haven't been flying the revelation in a very long time mostly because I was busy with the smaller ships. I don't want to be rusty with small ships. After all, I am still a cruiser pilot. And as a cruiser pilot, I must not get rusty at flying cruisers. Well, uh, this Gila is... Actually, you know, now since I have tried it, Now since I tried it, uh, I'm kind of thinking what might be We're under attack. what might be more more fun to use. Now We're again, the the drone bombs for PvP are definitely the the way to go because those drone bombs basically pop ships and. 
they will definitely we do. They would be doing a lot of damage. But on the other hand, the Wookie Charge can also be can also be good. Uh, I can definitely see it being fun. And it does a lot of auto damage, at least with the, the torpedoes. So I guess both uh, weapons, well, both implants are are okay to use. But I would still say stick with drone bombs, mostly because the gila has more drone damage and. The drones can also be used to go and chase down interceptors, frigates, and they can be quite problematic for for some cruisers. Again, uh, the drone bombs can pop the action frigates, and even if they have stabs, it doesn't matter because once you launch the bombs and drones on them, they will just pop, and that's I think uh, why I'm. Starting to to kind of like the Gila again, although I have the Stratius, I have the I have the Stratius, I have some other drone boats. I don't have any drone boat battleship. I actually thought to go and buy the Nestor instead of the Space Pen, but I guess the Space Pen is a bit more iconic for me because uh, I'm the one who who made the Ortus popular and. I think it's just a uh, tradition to go and get the Mordu flagship because why not? And so far, the space pen has been working really, really well. Now with this build, I see that the tank is holding really well. And the whole ship is so far working really well, and this might be a nicely balanced build. Now in high sec, as I mentioned before, you don't have to go. Uh, with a tank build, you can easily go with full DPS. One Osferatu and one large shield booster should be enough. However, in low sec, if you like to run missions with the Gila, I would prefer a tank build, basically something very similar to this, to this one, because in low sec you might you might encounter pirates, and a good tank can beat a good DPS ship. I always say that. Especially with the Gurista pirate ships, they can be very good bait ships because of their phenomenal shield resistance. So the the Gila is definitely a very nice boat to run storyline missions with. It's also a very nice boat to run encounters with. Although it requires you to have skills for missiles and drones, which might be a problem if you only have if you only ha if you only have like skills for one weapon system. So, in order to make the Gila work, you need to have skills for both for both weapon systems in my case I did reset the drone skills a long time ago mostly because I was working on some of the battleship skills and at the time I didn't really use all of drones but recently uh, after I done all the battleship skills that I that I planned to do, uh, I recovered the drum skills and now uh, I also fly the Stratius into PvP. The Stratius has 1000 DPS, also a DPS build and the Gila would have 1.5 thousand DPS which is uh, you know a little bit higher DPS than the Stratius. However, the Stratus has one big advantage. It's it's the fact that it can cloak and it can immediately tackle a target after it decloaks. But overall, 
Uh, it doesn't matter what ship you fly, the pilot matters the most. I mean, uh, I've destroyed a Balgorn with a Stabio fleet, so yeah, it's funny things like that happen in the game. And I'm 100% sure that the Gila is a very good PvP boat. I'm also 100% sure that uh, there are players out there who will make the Gila work for PvP. I might go and get a Gila for this purpose uh, after I finish up with the Cinnabal or Vigilant, depends which one comes first, but in any case, the Gila does perform really well, uh, the missile implant and uh, the drone bombs seem to work really fine, really well, however, I personally prefer the drone bombs over the warhead charge, just because the drone bombs can have crazy alpha and they can have really good DPS. So. With that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed, really hope that the builds that you see here can help you or at least inspire you to build your own ship. And with that being said, I love you all, fly safe, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.